Welcome back to this edition of Lunchtime Live, coming to you from Cal State San Bernardino. Today we're talking with Cadence from Chino, and we just want to remind you that all groups and artists featured on Lunchtime Live are selected by an independent group of students and staff from California State University San Bernardino. All right, now more with your host, Junior Barra. Junior. Thank you, Misha. And we're talking here with Cadence, and uh, I feel like we kind of rushed that uh, commercial break, and we were just talking about the passing of, of Cadence's um, mom, the recent passing. And first off, we want to thank you for, for sharing that with yeah, us. Yeah, thank oh, you. Of course. And I know that's uh, it's still, you know, um, whether it's a few years or a few months, you know, it's still... Um, you know, it still hurts and it's still something that affects and has an impact on your life. But what I want to talk about is is the message that you have for, for those out there that have loved ones or, or siblings or, or parents or friends that have passed away or that, that do have cancer or that have a brain tumor or, or whatever. What, what, what message, you know, with you going through that something that, that um, surreal, you know, uh, what message do you have for those listeners and viewers out there? Well, first, uh, first of all, you have to cherish every single day you have with your loved ones because it's true what they say. Like, you never know. You never know what could happen. You know, one day they're here, the next day they're not. I mean, it also says in the Bible that God won't give you anything you can't handle. So, and that's, that's true, you know, because if we couldn't handle this situation, my mom would still be here right now. But we could. And, um, I mean, it also says that the pain you go through now is just temporary, you know. Mm. Um because, you know, as soon as, you know, because this, this life on earth is short, you know, you may think like 80 years is a long time. Like, no, that's just that's just a little tiny raindrop out of like a trillion raindrops, you know, and it's just this life is short. So you have to live every day like you like it's your last day. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for people going through stuff like that, you just have to cherish your family every day. You know, you have to tell them how much you love them. You have to constantly be around them. You've got to you've got you got to love on them constantly. You know, and I know you get in your little petty arguments, but it's it's not worth it. It's really not. So you just you just have to like put, you know, your pride aside or whatever and you just have to you have to cherish your family. Mm. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And that even even for me, you know, um not not having anyone, you know, my my siblings are all healthy and my my parents are healthy, but even that, you know, touches home, mm-hmm. you know. Because like you said, you never know, you know, one one day they're hit here and the next, they, they may the not next be. They're, they're gone. It's know? a good reminder for all of us yeah, definitely. to live by those words. Definitely. Thank you for sharing that, you know, that, that, that wisdom. And, and, and sticking with the, the topic of, of inspiration, um, let's, let's go towards more now. Uh, when you think of, of musicians, you know, which mus- uh, I know we heard that you said uh, Will Smith has one of the greatest impacts on you now. Now, mm-hmm. when you think of greatest musicians that you've ever heard, wh- what are the first few that come to mind? Oh, man. Um, of course, you know, coming from the hip hop field, you got to say Biggie and Tupac. Mm. You've got to, um, you know, guys like Nas or, um, Mm. Lupe Fiasco. Um, there's just so many great artists. I mean, I like the old Jay-Z, not the new Jay-Z, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Um, just, I mean, there's so many great artists, man. It's, I can't, I really can't name them all. Mm. But I mean, the one that's given me the most inspiration is is Will Smith. Definitely, Will Smith. I still listen to his Big Willie style album that came out in like <laughs> the late '90s. You know, <laughs> never gets old. Man. Never, never gets, gets old. old I know. Never gets old. And just the other day, I threw on a a, a Biggie album. You oh, know? you can and never get tired. Of you can never get. I mean, you hear, <laughs> it's crazy because with those old '90s, '80s, '90s hip hop, you you always find something new. Yeah. You know, it never oh, gets yeah. old. There's something in that track. They're like, what the heck? I never, how have I been listening to this for decades? And I, I just caught that, caught that mm-hmm. you know, and that's, that's what makes me music so special to me, you know, is, is finding that inspiration every time you listen to it. Oh you yeah. Know? You know, and relating to it every single time in a different way. Exactly. You know, so, so now let's talk about your, your, your writing. Uh, take us, take us through your writing process, you know? Okay. So some people like to write before, but see me, I will either make a beat or find a beat and I'll just play it. And the feeling that the beat gives me, that's what I'll write about, you know? So it's all based on like the feel that I get. So sometimes if I hear a song, I get like a, like an emotional feeling. So I'll write about, you know, pain that I felt or breakups I've gone through or just, just, you know, just, just sadness that's happened in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. Or if I hear like a, like a a beat where I can just feel like I could just write about anything. Like, you know, like those old hip hop beats, those boom bap beats, Mm -hmm. I'll just, just start writing. 
you know, just based on, um, or I'll just focus on metaphors, you know, and trying to like say something that makes, that goes like over people's heads. And it's like, hold up, let me rewind that because I didn't catch that. Hmm. Or, you know, they have those songs where it's just like uplifting, you know, it's like, okay, so I got an uplifting feel from this song, so I want to inspire other people with my lyrics. Mm. So it just like depends on the feeling that I get from the beat. Nice, nice. Yeah. yeah. And I know you said uh, a word that you said is, is metaphor, and and I love that because like to me, I I say you know, uh, good writers uh, tell a story, mm-hmm. but great writers paint pictures. Exactly. You know, and I feel like metaphors are one of the best ways to paint a picture. Oh yeah. You know, and it's because. It, you get that visual, you know. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now going with your, your, you said writing the the lyrics and and the beats. Do you do you record your own music? Do you step into the studio, someone else's studio? Do you produce your own tracks? How does how does that work for you? Actually, I do produce my own tracks. Um, I'm more of like a sample kind of guy. Like, mm. I like to take parts from other songs and you know put them to mine. So I'll make a beat and then I'll just go in my room and you know record the track. Mm. So I've been blessed along the way. You know, I got my first mic when I was like a sophomore and it was just given to me. Wow. And, you know, my first audio interface, it was just given to me, you know, and like my first I had to buy my first uh, recording software. And so I used that for a couple of years. And then I just recently upgraded like a new audio audio interface and a new mic. And so I've been blessed like this whole way. Nice, you know. nice. Now, I know you're saying that you just uh, upgraded and, you know, your music has evolved. You know, mm-hmm. how do you how do you feel your music personally has evolved from? I know you said you, you've been making music since sixth grade. Oh, yeah. You know, how, how is that? How do you feel if you look back and then you look now? How do you feel like what? How has it evolved? My lyrics and my writing style has evolved big time. Um, back then my lyrics, you know, like plain, simple, like bad, sad, mad, Chad, you know, stuff like that. Now it's like. I use bigger words and, you know, my wordplay is a lot different. So I'll do like a, sometimes I'll rhyme like really fast and slow it up and then switch it back up to really fast. It's just, I, I play with my, my wordplay. Nice. You know, I, I, I see what I can and can't do. And, and if I can't do it, I work on it so I can do it. Yeah. You know? Nice, nice. And that's, that's the beauty of being an independent artist is you have the freedom, yeah. you know, to yeah. create however in whatever way that you want. Exactly. You know, when, when you're under a label, you know, yes, they're blessed to, to be able to do that full time. But there's limitations that they have, you Tons. know, the, the labels are telling them what to do, what they like, what way to go, you know, who but to as work an, with, you yeah, know. who to work with, you know, but as an independent artist, it's such a, a blessing to be able to do, you know, tap into any sort of thing that you'd like and you'd be exactly. able to say, hey, you know, that didn't work or, or that worked, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Um, and so enough with us talking, let's go ahead and, <laughs> and jump into another song. This next track is called Twerk. Tell us a little bit about Twerk before we listen to, to the track. So this one, it's just a fun song. Just basically, I just wanted to, you know, just be in a party environment. And you know how it is, you know, you like, you just want to see some girls just twerk, you know, like that's it. So this <laughs> is like, ladies, just forget everything and just, just go to the party and just nice. twerk. Nice. Nice. Well, just twerk. <laughs> let's, let's, let's listen to twerk. <laughs> I'm ready. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready to twerk myself, <laughs> man.